Are you looking for an adrenaline rush? Do you want to get your heart racing, feel your blood pumping, but you don't want to fork out hundreds to go skydiving? Boo! Those companies will charge you thousands, but we won't charge you millions for that adrenaline rush. For the low price of just zero dollars, the Homebush Bay Drive DFO Roundabout is the perfect destination for you. This is not a game for the faint of heart. You'll need lightning fast reflexes to enter this roundabout, nerves of steel to make it around the roundabout, and the ability to keep your cool under pressure as you quickly snatch your chance and exit your joyride. It's an electrifying experience that will leave you feeling more alive than ever before. That's the Building Beautifully Guarantee. And if you're lucky, you might just end up leaving a piece of your car behind as a souvenir. Oh, oh, what the f Ah, that's the dream. Bring your A-game, Sydney. This isn't any old roundabout. This is Australia's worst roundabout. Before I continue, massive shout out to my monthly Kofi supporters. Please do consider supporting me over on Kofi if you can. Also, please subscribe if you haven't already. And do be sure to check out the rest of my channel, your go-to YouTube destination for all things city planning after the video. Roundabouts have been found to lead to a 75% reduction in serious crashes and a 30-50% to 50 reduction in overall crashes at intersections. Why is this? Well, roundabouts force you to slow down. First when giving way to traffic to your right, and again when navigating the circular bends. On top of that, having everyone moving in the same direction reduces the conflict points to just 8, which thus makes T-bone collisions much less likely. Traffic flow is also just generally better. A Mythbusters episode moved 460 cars through a roundabout in just 15 minutes. Compare this to a four-way stop. There's nothing slowing you down through the intersection. There's 32 conflict points, making T-bone collisions much more likely. Traffic flow is generally lower. In the same time, that Mythbusters episode only moved 385 cars. Roundabouts easily win, so it's no wonder that Australia has an estimated 8,000 roundabouts, ranging from small single-lane roundabouts, to two-lane roundabouts, to three-lane roundabouts, and even roundabout interchanges. So, roundabouts are great. Well, except for this one. The Herringbush Bay Drive, Australia Avenue, Underwood Road roundabout. One of the most dangerous roundabouts in Australia. But hey, where else are you going to feel alive without paying a cent? Well, unless you crash into someone. Building beautifully has no responsibility or liability in relation to any loss of damage that you incur, including damage to your car, rising for use in roundabout. Before COVID, the intersection saw 30,000 cars every single day, with 4,500 every peak hour alone. 44 crashes were reported at the roundabout from 2016 to 2020. The intersection has a level of service F, which indicates that traffic flow is so poor, so low, that flow completely breaks down. Cars stop incessantly, and even establishing a meaningful flow rate is impossible. You see, for all its benefits, roundabouts will eventually reach a point at which they too are congested, and an intersection with traffic lights is required. Roundabouts are best for low flow, smaller intersections. Signalised intersections simply manage high flow traffic better. There's a reason why you only see roundabouts in quieter roads. Okay, so how did this roundabout end up being so bad? Well, when Homebush Bay Drive originally opened in 1990, the intersection with Australia Avenue was just an at-grade roundabout. You see, back in the 90s, there really just wasn't that much here. It was mostly just landfill, as well as the home of a massive abattoir and other industrial activity. There wasn't much traffic, so it made sense to just put a roundabout here. I mean, come on, <laughs> what are they going to do? Put the Olympics here or something? Oh, huh, that's, a that's exactly what they did. Huh. So yeah, the Sydney 2000 Olympics were held here, and this area became known as Sydney Olympic Park. To handle the increased traffic, in 1998, right before the Olympics, a flyover was added to this intersection, allowing Homebush Bay Drive traffic to bypass the roundabout. Still, the roundabout remained underneath. But hey, the Olympics would come and go, and the roundabout would be able to handle the fallen traffic that would follow. The traffic should be manageable. So long as no one decides to add anything else here, such as, uh, I don't know, a shopping centre. Wait, what? They opened a shopping centre right next to the roundabout? 
You've got to be kidding me. The DFO outlet opened in 2001, right next to the roundabout, attracting more traffic to the intersection. Again though, it's fine, it's fine. The intersection can handle this. Just don't build any apartments or developments in the area without first doing something about this intersection. Wait, they built massive developments in neighboring Wentworth Point and Newington? Okay, you know what, that's it. I'm out of here. I can't, I can't do this. No, I'm not, I'm not gonna do it. You can't, you can't make me. Of course, the DFO isn't the only cause of this roundabout's problems. This is the only connection to the Olympic Park from the A3. It really is this intersection or none. The off-ramp coming from Homebush Bay Drive and the two-lane Underwood Road are both too short to handle this congestion at this roundabout. The actual intersection has poor signage, poor visibility due to the massive bridge pillars and poor lighting due to the massive overbridge. Something needs to be done about this roundabout, obviously. When Transport for New South Wales finally sat down to try and figure out what they were going to do about the intersection, many options were considered. Turning the roundabout into a three-lane roundabout, building overpasses for certain turns, turning it into a normal signalised intersection. But instead of any of that, a revolutionary solution was announced in April 2022. A diverging diamond. A diverging diamond is a truly special type of intersection. In a diverging diamond, traffic temporarily crosses to the opposite side of the road before entering or exiting the interchange. This completely eliminates the need for right turns across oncoming traffic. As a result, there's just 8 conflict points, compared with 32 at a normal signalised intersection, making it much safer. Eliminating right turns into oncoming traffic makes traffic flow much faster as well, as these turns can be performed much faster. Also, each traffic light only needs two phases, go and stop, no turn phase. All of this combined significantly improves traffic flow. Obviously, one very scary thing about this type of intersection is the idea of driving on the opposite side of the road. But I wouldn't worry too much about that. Motorists generally indicate very significant approval for this type of design, with a US survey indicating 85-95% to 95 of motorists find this design very beneficial. People get used to it. Queensland already has two diverging diamond interchanges, and Sydney will be getting its first with the Homebush Bay Drive roundabout upgrade. This is expected to significantly improve traffic performance, reduce vehicle travel time, and improve safety massively, which is all a huge win for drivers. Clear pedestrian crossings will be provided, and bike lanes will be added. Also, a traffic lane will be added in most directions, which should help increase capacity. The project will cost $100 million. Yes, I know, it's a lot, but infrastructure rarely isn't. The real kicker is that the project won't start construction until 2025, and it won't finish for another 18 months after that. Most optimistically, traffic won't get to use the diverging diamond here until mid-2026. But again, infrastructure rarely moves quickly. Projects like this present real engineering challenges. In this case, those piers that hold up Homebush Bay Drive make everything so much more complicated, as does the fact that the intersection still needs to be in full operation during construction. Look, it is a bummer that it's going to take so long, but that's just the way it is. At least something is finally being done about this horrible intersection. And hey, three more years until the upgrade opens, plenty of time for you to come and visit Australia's worst roundabout. Come one, come all, and experience the sheer thrill of a roller coaster, all from your car. Oh, crap. Now, if you'll excuse me, a mob of angry motorists who followed my advice, drove through this roundabout and crashed their cars, seem to be chasing me. Bye.